half a century on from Ken Loach's groundbreaking film, Kathy Come Home, John Saunders examines modern day homelessness in the West. The swinging 60s, brimming with optimism. And Hurst scored for the third time. England had won the World Cup. A new era of music, fashion and technology. But it wasn't the same for everyone. In 1966, a BBC drama documentary burst the bubble. Kathy Come Home told the harrowing story of a young couple's descent into homelessness. The director was Ken Loach. When we made Kathy, there was a serious homeless problem that people didn't recognize. It was a groundbreaking film. It looked like a documentary showing how any one of us could find ourselves facing homelessness. You would see the fictional event. The next answer we got was no children. No children accepted. And then you'd hear a piece of documentary fact. Birmingham, 39,000 families on the waiting list. Leeds, 13 and a half thousand. So that you knew this just wasn't an isolated incident. This reflected the state of society as a whole. From the moment Kathy simply gets behind with her rent, her fate is sealed. She loses everything. Her home, her husband, even her children. The film still packs a punch. Oh, that's the beginning of the end, isn't it? A raise in the rent. Took the children, walked off with them, didn't care. It's pretty much what they said to me. Kathy Come Home tackles homelessness in a typically brutal and honest way. That film was made over 50 years ago. I want to find out if people are facing the same ordeal today. I've had a major heart attack. I've been told by my doctor that I'm not supposed to go back to work yet. Ken Loach has been making controversial films throughout his long career. I'm going to have to I'm ask you to explain to you a situation and you don't care. His latest, I, Daniel Blake, tells the story of a man beaten by the benefits system. I've got about 12 quid in my purse. Do you know what? You've created a scene. All right. Jesus what am I Christ! To do? Who's first in this queue? I am. Do you mind if this young lass signs on first? No, no, you carry on. This isn't your concern. I want you to get out as well. This is Ken Loach's home city of Bath. It's a tourist magnet, attracting millions of visitors every year. They come for the Georgian architecture, the Roman history, and the designer shops. At the end of their holidays, the tourists will pack up and go home. But across the Southwest, there are more than a thousand families who have no place of their own. They're faced with eviction, living in temporary accommodation, or even sofa surfing with friends and family. It's just a few days before Christmas, and Luke's family is facing eviction. I received an email on the 1st of November, and with that email, there was an attached a Section 21 notice, effectively giving us two months to vacate the property. Luke's rented this house in Bristol for more than five years. Got mine in my wife's room here, with Jack staying with us. He works full-time, but his low wage means he partly relies on housing benefit. Having to go and acquire financial assistance to put a roof over my children's head, I feel like I've failed as a father. I really do. The reality being for me is that, rightly or wrongly, if I wasn't working, this rent would be paid for me. But I'm passionate in the fact that I want to set an example for my children that no working does pay. We've got my two eldest in this room here, typical boys room. So they share, they've got their own bit of space. It's just really stressful. You know, you try and get into the Christmas spirit and me and my wife just feel flat because we know that once all the celebrations are done, once the turkey's eaten, it's time to pack up, not just pack up the Christmas decks, pack up the wardrobes, pack up everything out the door. Um, 
I need to just put so much stress on us. You know, we've been snapping at each other, snapping with the kids, just purely because of the amount of stress that this has caused us. My biggest concern is that the stress gets too much and then me and my wife end up splitting up. Children then end up growing up with a split family. I didn't want that. I, you know, I love my wife, I love my children, I want to be there for them all the way. Um, but the stress on this is just something else. I just want a place where I can bring up my children, they've got nice happy memories. That's what a home is to me. Memories, experiences, safety, comfort. This isn't a home anymore. Not at all. Luke and his family only have three weeks left to find somewhere to live. The story of Cathy was a couple who are quite well set up. The guy's got a job, um, the girl's got a job, they have children, he gets injured, he can't drive, he's a lorry driver. One thing leads to another, they move in with uh, his parents and it's, it all goes wrong. What, three months in arrears? Well, I knock his block in, I mean, who does he think he's talking to? Just like Cathy's husband, Reg, Imogen lost her job. She was a manager of a charity shop. He says here we are in three months. Oh, that's the beginning of the end, isn't it? A raise on the rent. Hey, look, I told you once we'll pay you, if only you'll give us time. I know your game. You want to get us out so you can charge someone else key money. Can you relate to that? I'll tell you, I've always been really careful all my life not to <laughs> get in that situation. When Imogen became unemployed, her landlord increased the rent by £200 a month, raising it to the maximum paid by housing benefit. I'm just a normal person who's lost their job. I'm lucky I've still got my home. You know, other people literally would be a lot worse off. I could have been kicked out of here. If the landlord decided he didn't want people on benefits, he could have been the sort of landlord that just goes, oh, well, um, gives, you, gives you a month's notice because you've lost your job. So I was a bit lucky there. Do you, you know, think that's fair, though? Not fair at all, no. It's, a, it's taking the mickey out of the system. And me, it means that when I... Well, I, I am genuinely looking for a job. I don't want to be unemployed. Um, it means that when I get a job, I'm going to be £200 a month worse off than I was. Or I'll still have to go and try and search for somewhere that's more affordable for me. Why are you still here if that's happened? Why I'm still here is because it's actually almost impossible to be able to afford to move, for me. You know, you look at anywhere nowadays, it's like you've got to have uh, £500 rent, you've got to have £500 deposit, you might have to have agency fees, so you're looking at probably at least £1,000, just clear, to move house. Now, I literally haven't had that money. If I said to you now, what does home look like to you? It's sort of like, it's like a hug around you, it's safe, it's, it's cosy, it's secure. I think so many of us just like, we don't even know what that is anymore. And I sort of feel like because I've been here for a little while, I've imified it, I've put my, my mark on it, I've put my art everywhere and bloody blah, 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 got my plants, I've got my door that shuts really well and I can double bolt it. I feel quite safe and secure here. But that whole real nurturing feeling of like, it's home, no, it's not there yet. Kathy and her family couldn't pay the rent. They lose their home and end up living in her mother-in-law's house. It doesn't work out. It's about time you was going. All right, I've got to go. Keep your rotten old flat. I can't stand it anyway. It's driving me around the bloody bend. But sofa surfing or sharing someone else's home isn't always possible. Just a short walk from Bath's designer shops is a hostel. It's home to 11 people who have nowhere else to go. People look down on people for being homeless, but it can happen to the best of us. Lorna's 36. She's been living here for six months. What's it like at Barnabas House? Because you've got similar people from a similar background all together. It's actually a really nice place at Barnabas House because we're all in the same position. Everybody helps each other out, which is really nice, but at the same time, it's hard work living in a hostel when you haven't got your own place. 
I didn't want you guys to film in there today um, because that's my one little space that I've got. I don't want it on telly. That's my one little thing for me, really. But do you know what? With Barnabas House, if they hadn't helped us out, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I'd be right now. Can't you come round and give me a hand? All right, all right, love. Watching the film, many of Lorna's neighbours felt Kathy's desperation when she had nowhere to go. I'll put this one in here. They're making themselves a tent. Bloody ridiculous. Well, I've thought about that before, especially in the summer. Sean's not very well either. Yeah, I considered putting a tent out last summer when I was sort of sofa surfing and just all over the shop. I did, I did consider buying a tent and just going pitching it up hmm. because, you know, I had not a lot of money at the time and, you know, my relationship had broke down and didn't have anywhere to live. And it's, yeah, that was quite hard to watch when they put the tent up. Mm -hmm. When we told Cathy's story, I think people were prepared to be touched. I think now there's been such a conscious propaganda against people who are vulnerable, you know, skivers against drivers, benefit cheats. There's a cynicism and a hardness now in our, in our culture which turns, it's, turns away from people who are having a hard time. Do you find that you're constantly judged even though you're trying to better your life? Yeah. Yeah, yeah by society, definitely. Uh, we all have goals in life and it's mainly to basically lead a normal life, whatever that is anyway, whatever normal is, but just to break the circle of living in hostels, getting kicked out, living on the street, trying to get back in, getting a place, getting kicked out, and then, as Lorna said, once you've been kicked out of somewhere, the council are like, you're intentionally homeless, but there might have been reasons that you've been kicked out, that's something that could have been stopped, or some sort of support network that you could have had behind you that could have maybe led you in a better direction. When you're left to your own devices and you're in this sort of depressive spiral going around and around, it's, it's hard to sort of break that. The, the story of Cathy um, was one that uh, came to us through the writer Jeremy Sanford. He'd done research as a journalist and he described situations in which families were broken up because they had nowhere to live. And that's shocking, isn't it, to think people can't live together, the, the families are destroyed because they've got nowhere to live. So we looked into it and um, we did the research and we made the film and the film basically follows the research. The first two people's houses are ready for the Minister of Housing, Mr. Harold Macmillan, to inspect with the architect. Built in 12 weeks for less than a thousand pounds each, these houses seem one answer to the housing drive. In the 60s and 70s, tens of thousands of council houses were built in fact, by the late 70s, over a third of the population rented their homes. It's my great pleasure to hand that over to you as a little token of the attraction. But from the 80s, the right to buy scheme meant councils sold off their properties, leaving fewer available for families to rent. It's no solution. But in Bath, there is a unique shelter which gets people off the streets. It costs three pounds a night. Wow, this is quite small. Yeah, I can touch both sides of the wall. It's really, really small. I got offered a pod there, but I took one look at it and burst into tears. It was so small. I was too claustrophobic. I couldn't do it. And I spent the night on the streets that night. I just couldn't be there. Spending the night on the streets was, yeah, it wasn't good. I'm not going to lie. But it had to be done at the end of the day. Do you remember where you stayed? I think I stayed down the wreck under the seats. The violent relationship that I had with my bloke was going through my mind. I'd lost my kids. That was going through my mind. I'd lost my home. That was going through my mind. Everything was going through my mind.
Like Kathy's children, Kai had a very difficult childhood, being moved between family members and taken into care. We're back in Midsummer Norton in Somerset, where he found himself on the street when he was just 15. When you was homeless, was there any particular place that you used to go to? No, I just walked up and down. What does it feel like being back here, knowing that you was homeless here? I zone out of when I've got hard times in life because of my past experiences being at home and the way I grew up. And I don't, I don't, I don't think it's just my shield to protect me so I don't get too emotionally attached to the problem and then have a meltdown or go into some sort of problem that can't be sorted out quick. The start of your journey to becoming homeless, how did that happen? Me and my dad had a few arguments in the house and then he kicked me out. I went to stay with my sister, which is up in Westfield. And then, because she was pregnant, she was getting stressed. I just think things got too chaotic for her. And then she kicked me out. And at that time, I didn't think I had anyone to call. Well, I knew I didn't because I think I had, like, annoyed everyone anyway. So then I came here on the high street and pretty much had nowhere to go. Didn't know what to do. People who do suffer family breakups and being taken into care. Um, they, they've got more hurdles to, to jump over than, than most people and obviously need support. I mean, I mean people are, are always extraordinary, aren't they? And who, can, who can say how people will turn out? But it, it doesn't help, does it? If your schooling is being changed every year, if you've got no um, permanent home, if you're cramped, um, if you're... Um, if your mother, parents, uh, depends on food banks, I mean, if, if you're in that trap, yes, I mean, you are, the children become vulnerable. And um, who knows what problems they will, will come from that. Eventually, Kai was excluded from school. I was really naughty at school. I didn't have any guidance, so I think my schooling life was quite bad, but then school didn't quite understand what I was going through at home, so they, they didn't understand why I was getting angry and naughty. Hi, at the point you was homeless, and essentially all these doors were shutting in your face, and there was nowhere for you to go, how did you feel and where was your mindset at that time? But I was quite stressed. I, I don't think I coped well. I became quite ill. Um, I was seeing my doctor quite regularly because I had different symptoms for different things and just didn't think I was coping well. I wasn't going to the toilet properly, I was bringing up puke quite a lot. But I've had people tell me that I'm never going to get anywhere in life, I'm useless and I'm going to be sleeping on the streets. Well, I have had to stay on the streets pretty much till two o'clock in the morning, but I've been able to get back off, off that and into somewhere to actually have a bath and something to eat because I didn't want to be there. And do you think that you've ever had a point where your hope was lost at some point in your life? Many times. I think I've been to the point where I just didn't want to be around anymore. I felt like I didn't want to be here, but I just kept thinking that if I do something, at least I'll get somewhere and then I'll be somewhere and just keep going up from there. The impact of Cathy was um, on society was, as, as a news story, was immense. Um, the impact in changes was minimal. Um, there was mo one small change in terms of um, local authorities having to house the man of the family. They would have to house husbands so that families wouldn't be split up. And so that was a good thing. But it was not big. And, and of course, the long term impact has been pretty well zero um, because home homelessness is much worse. We could take your children into care and turn you out just like that. Please don't do that. As Kathy's life continues to spiral out of control, the authorities tell her what could happen to her children. It's Luke's worst nightmare. That is a shocking attitude, isn't it? That's how it was, aren't it? But you, not much has changed because the council said to me if I refuse any of their help, the next thing they do is find social services. Terrible, isn't it? Luke's situation is affecting three generations of his family. <laughs> it's heartbreaking for them and it's heartbreaking for us because we can't, we can't change that situation for them. 
you know, they could come and live here, but I have my daughter living with us and my son-in-law whilst they're saving for their deposit. We have two bedrooms and a box room. So, and the fact if they came to us, they're now, they would now be living in a different council area from moving from Bristol to South Gloucestershire, therefore with no accountability for them. So you think, would we actually be helping? We wouldn't. We understand Luke and Sarah's going to have a struggle. I would hate if my grandchildren had the same struggle my children have. There's no let up in the house hunting, but private renting seems to be out of reach. Your annual salary has to be 30 times the monthly rent, which the average house price for rent over this side of town, you're looking at about 900, 950 for like a free bed house. I mean, in the ideal world, I'd like a four, but that's, it's not going to happen. I'd need to be earning close to £30,000 a year. How many people in Lawrence Western are actually earning close to £30,000 a year? And I would classify myself as I'm on a decent wage. They looked at private rent and they didn't meet the affordability. So I went guarantor on their rent, but because, you know, I've worked 40 odd years as a nurse, did 26 years for the NHS, and now I've retired from nursing, taken my NHS pension. Um, I do a bit of agency to, to, to support that and to top that up. And because I've got a zero hours contract, they wouldn't accept me as a guarantor for him. Even though we own our house outright, my wife still works, regular, but between us, we didn't meet the affordability. I had the assumption before I've gone through this that people with, with housing shortages were people that weren't working, that were too lazy, too banal. But the fact is, that's just not true. You know, there's people just like myself that go out to work Monday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, working, trying to provide for their family, and this gets taken, you, you, your family home gets taken from underneath you. I knew they'd catch up with us wherever we tried to bed down for the night. The most shocking scene of Cathy Come Home is at the end. She is thrown out of an overcrowded hostel onto the street, and her children are taken away. How did that make you feel, watching that? Um, I think I got a bit angry, to be honest, because they're not, they didn't really care about her feelings and they didn't do it in a, a kind manner. They just took the children, walked off with them, they didn't care, and they made her stay. And she couldn't really say goodbye properly. Great, we'll turn to Miss Bright in three. Right, turn. Kai's found a kind of surrogate family through his involvement with the army cadets, right, and it's right changed his life. Turn. In your own platoon, you get the feel it's a family thing, and then when you go with every other platoon in your company, which makes up the battalion, you get more of a cousins and more part of the family coming in. I now want to go see Breen Holiday Camp. Holiday Camp. Tell me the grid reference. Which pencil? Which pencil? Fifty-five. No. Yeah. pencil. When I joined, I wasn't very nice pleasant or uh, any of that. But now I think I've improved a lot, dramatically, quickly as well, but with the help of cadets. Whilst it might be legal to serve this notice, it's not really acceptable, it's not ethical and it's not moral. So we're here to stand up and show people that people power can really help. Okay. Just days before Luke's due to lose his home, the there. community gets together to try to delay the eviction. They were told they were going to go into emergency accommodation straight away. They couldn't guarantee it would be in this area, even though one of the kids is doing his GCSEs, one of them is autistic. Um, they would be in emergency accommodation for about six weeks. If they didn't take that emergency accommodation, if it was in Yeovil or Stroud, then it'd be... Um, willfully making themselves um, homeless and therefore the social services would be contacted because they owe a duty of care to the children. We are fighting for security and to be treated with dignity. 
The aim of the protest was to get an answer for the landlord to whether they could stay a bit longer because they clearly couldn't be out on the 1st of January without going into emergency accommodation, which would be very unsettling for a family of six. Thank you everybody for coming so far today and uh, keep up the fight. Yeah. The eviction can't be stopped, but the protest has won them some precious time. They've given us a two month extension um, to the eviction notice, which it is just brilliant. It means we can have a Christmas, we can relax a little bit, we've got a bit of breathing space. We still have to be proactive and try and get something sorted, but we've just got that bit of breathing space now. Like I've, I've been saying, the, the council are doing all they can. They've, they've agreed that they're going to help us, um, but there's, you know, it just gives us that extra bit of time so we can stay in a place and keep a roof over our heads over winter. It's, it's brilliant news. It's just such a weight off my shoulders. I recently caught up with Luke to see if anything has changed. How's the house hunting going? So it's hit and miss, really. Um, you've got private rents, you just don't match your affordability. Um, and then with the council, it's a case of the bidding system, um, just waiting for a property to come up within this area. And how important is it staying in Lawrence Weston for you? And oh, it's family? massive. It's, it's hugely important because my family are settled here. You know, we've got family that live on our doorstep. And what kind of stress is this having on yourself personally as the man of the house and your family? The stress on me is unreal because um, you've got the threat of, like, you know, you could be, you and your family could be homeless within a matter of months. And family, like the children, we've tried to sort of shelter them as, as best we can and keep it sort of quite positive. Uh, obviously, they're, they're aware of what is going on now, um, but it's just a case of keeping them, uh, you know, keeping things positive for them so it doesn't affect them too much. And then my wife is quite stressed about everything as well, as you can imagine. And what advice would you give to our contributors of the film? I'd say to them, be angry. It's not your fault. You're in this situation because the system doesn't work. The system is generating this poverty and this cruelty, and they know it. But the people who get rich because of it, of course, are in power. All I'm going for is my children. I need to make sure that they are safe, they are saying they've got a roof over their heads. I will do anything that I need to do to make sure that they're safe and secure. One day, you know, things may be completely different, but at the moment, it's a bit hard to see that. Twelve million people watched Kathy come home and were shocked by its devastating portrayal of homelessness. It showed how an ordinary family could lose their home. And in that sense, nothing's changed. Plus, it was made when there was a huge housing shortage. Again, no change there. So although it's been over 50 years since Ken Loach's iconic film was first shown on TV, it seems that Kathy's story is still being told today. Lorna's now preparing to move out of the hostel and into a place of her own. Imogen has a new job and is saving for a deposit on a flat. And Kai now has his own place to live and he's been working for the charity which helped him off the streets and back on his feet. But his future is still far from certain.